Hello everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcome to episode 15 of Let's Play Diddy Kong Racing! And last time we finished off everything we could possibly do in all four worlds, including the trophy races and the bosses and everything. Got up to 39 balloons. Wow. <laughs> so close to the end, there's only 47 balloons in the whole game. And now, we're going to do something that I've been dreading since the very beginning the whiz pig race and this is probably like my 12th attempt to record this because I've had like 11 failed recording sessions in the past all of which have been at least like over an hour long or so so I'm pretty frustrated with this but hopefully this time will be different I think this race is just cursed it doesn't want me to show it on recording me winning God, he's so big it's not fair Yes, I can, Wizpig. Just apparently not on recording. I beat him off recording, like, twice. <laughs> Which still isn't that great, considering I've raced him tens of thousands of times. That is a literal, like, assumption. In my life, I've done this race ten- or attempted this race tens of thousands of times. And the reason that it's so hard for me is that I'm opting not to use the green boosts. Which... A lot of people will say that this race is impossible without the green boosts, but that is actually not true. Um, you can beat him without the green boosts, it just requires a lot of luck and a really, really good strategy. And I think I've developed a pretty good strategy here, which I'm not actually executing very well in this attempt. But I can explain it. Basically, the strategy is that at the very beginning of the race, you want to get your head start off the thing with like your with your boost or whatever, and you want to stay ahead of him by letting him kick you. He'll run up from behind, and you might be like, you might have an inclination to move to the side and let him pass you because he might like stampede over you and totally halt you. And that can happen sometimes. He can totally just freeze you on the spot sometimes, but most of the time, he will kick you and keep you ahead of him. And if you execute it perfectly right, if you get him to kick you at the right points and the right angles and everything, then that is how you're going to win this without the green boosts. Don't get me wrong, I highly recommend using the green boosts because it's a one in a million shot to win without them. With the green boosts though, I don't, I just don't use them because it makes this overly cheap. I could beat this guy by, by about half a lap. Half a lap? Can I talk? If, um, if I were to use those boosts. So I'm just going to take this way to do it, because I feel it's more fair. And we lost. On a big surprise. Perfectly centralized. I love this camera angle. Uh, I don't know, it's just like... Normally you see like, just no matter what, the camera angle's off to some kind of angle. Just doing something, trying to make it all dramatic. But that one is just perfectly centralized on Wizpig when you lose. It's just... It's so it's such a rare camera shot that you can't <laughs> you can't not notice how perfect it is. How funny it is. Okay, attempt number two. I'm not gonna be keeping track of all my attempts here. Because frankly that would drive me insane and it would make me much more disheartened than I already am. Let's see. He's gonna kick you once after that bridge, and he should kick you once on this log just like that. Yep. Now, if you, if you can, you want to get out of this part by not letting him kick you at all, because most of the time when he kicks you in that part right before that zipper, he'll actually kick you off course and possibly into the water sometimes. So it's kind of annoying. Do I totally hit that zipper? I don't know what you're talking about. So it's really just a gamble with that one kick, the third kick in the race, well, normally the third kick. So you might want to try to avoid it. I go for it anyways, just in the off chance that I will get a good kick. And there's a few things to keep in mind while doing this. If you miss any of the zippers, except for like a very, like very, like two different rare circumstances that can happen. If you miss any of the zippers, then you, pre you've pretty much lost. If you fall into the water at any point, you've lost. If you hit a wall at any point, you've lost. 
you literally can't spare anything on this race. Like, it's gonna be pretty much... It's 80% luck, this race, is what it is. Especially with all the water. Because even if you don't fall into the water, after, like, certain zippers, there's a bit of water and there's, like, a high tide and a low tide. And if you hit the high tide of that water, since there's so much friction on the surface of water, it'll actually slow you down tremendously. And it pretty much completely kills your chances of winning. Right here is one of those points. You see that water kind of slowed me down towards the end there. And right here especially is where it's most glaring. If, but sometimes you hit that low tide part, and that's what you want to try to do, is aim for the low tide. But it, it's so quick and moving and so erratic that it's pretty much impossible to aim for the low tide. And it's never in the same place at the same time, so... It's really just luck dependent almost entirely, that part. So if you do get it, if you manage to hit the low tide section and just uh, completely avoid the water, then consider yourself lucky. Very, very lucky. Very, very lucky. Yeah. It doesn't help that he glides to freaking pig flying. <laughs> A flying pig, it's just so dumb. It's so dumb. Like, you know that expression, when pigs fly and then something totally ridiculous will happen. Well, t behold, this pig is flying or gliding at the very least. So I don't know if it counts if he's just gliding instead of flying, but... It's still pretty spectacular. I think it's all in that cape, though. It's not even him. When a, pig's gr when a pig grows wings and flies, then that's when the expression will come true, I guess. There's so many things to just keep in mind during this race. There's a bunch of mini strategies within this grand strategy that I'm unfolding. And I might I might not even get the chance to explain them all because <laughs> to me they're pretty much just common sense now what I'm doing here. It's like almost instinctual. And it's still really hard for me to win even though it is instinct on what I have to do at every certain point. So I might not end up explaining things because I think they're already obvious enough. Even though they're probably not obvious at all to certain people. Yeah. When you're behind them like this, you want to stay to the inside, which is pretty obvious, so that you like cut down your time as much as possible. But when you're ahead of him, don't stay to the inside no matter what you do, because he doesn't stay to the inside. So if you're to the inside, he won't kick you and he'll just pass you. So that completely ruins the strategy if you're to the inside when you're ahead of him. So just remember that. Oh, there's so many annoying points in this race. So many points where, like, friction can get the better of you. That's, your num that's like your number two enemy in this race, is friction. Number one is Whizpig, obviously. Because Whizpig is always public enemy number one, no matter what. Even when he's dead, he's public enemy number one. Okay. Yeah, there's like this one hill coming up right here, and it's, it's a really kind of weird thing that happens on this hill. That hill that I just went over right now, that first hill out of the three hills, after the second last zipper, there's a point that's really far to the right on that hill that... Oh crap, I hit the side of that bridge. The side of that bridge has a pretty big hitbox, but yeah, if you, like, if you hit that part that's really far to the right on that hill, there's... A lot, a lot, a lot of friction there. So much so that it almost brings you to a dead halt if you hit that spot. I think it's just the angle and the slope working against you, and that's what causes that much friction. So you want to avoid that spot, but the problem is that there's also a spot that's very close to that spot, where there's no, well, seemingly no friction at all, and you'll just fly right over those hills, and that saves you a lot of time and keeps you pretty far ahead of Whizpig. But I don't know if it's really worth risking hitting that frictional spot to try and hit that, to try and get that boost. If you do get that boost, then count yourself lucky, because that's probably one of the best things you can get in this race, is that boost off the hill. Avoiding that friction spot. Crap. I thought he was going to stop me right there. Like Sometimes he comes down on top of you and like halts you. No! I was doing good that time, too. <laughs> oh, drat. 
Yeah, but there is another spot on that hill that I was just talking about that um, it's far to the left instead of far to the right. And it works almost the same way as that momentum boosting spot where there's no friction. It doesn't work quite as well, like you don't go flying over the hills like you would with that one spot to the right. But there's less, there's no chance, well actually there's less of a chance that you'll hit an incredibly frictional spot and just completely destroy your momentum. So I'd recommend going more to the left instead of to the right. Because it seems just like a safer bet, and you can you don't have to hit that spot on the right to win this race, or to even get ahead of him at the very end of the race there. That's a thing to keep in mind too. If you if you're not ahead of him by the very end of the race after those three hills, then you can't you can't pull ahead and like you can't pull ahead of him for the rest of the lap. Even though there's so there's very little of the lap left, you still can't pull ahead of him there. So that's kind of annoying, kind of thing to keep in mind. Like, see, like, since he's ahead of me right here, I can't pass him until... Well, I won't get a chance to pass him until pretty much the end of the third lap. Because you, you really can't pass him at the very beginning of a lap either. Because there's no there's hardly any zippers to get you close to him. So, yeah. There's, like, two zippers in the first half of this course. And there, there's, like, five and There are four or five in the second half. Yeah, see, one... Two and three. Yeah, that's another thing you want to avoid is um hitting the center of that hill that I've been talking about non-stop. If you hit the center of that hill, then there's not a lot of friction, but there's not a lot of momentum there either. You kinda just it's kinda like when you hit the water and it slows you down a little bit. So you want to avoid the middle of that hill too. When he does that, when he kicks you clear off the side of that first log, then I think it's pretty obvious that you can't win. Like I said, if you fall in the water, hit a wall, or miss a zipper, then um, then you can't win, pretty much. There is actually one point, and it's with this zipper here. You can miss this zipper if you want, but you have to be pretty far ahead of him. You, you, like, you have to get a good kick off of him, a good second kick, so that you're really far ahead of him. And then you can miss that. Actually, I'd recommend missing that zipper if you're far enough ahead of him. Because if you do, then he'll kick you at a certain point. Like, oh, it's hard to explain. It's at the top of the hill. It's after that zipper. I'll show you when we come up on it here. Like, see, so he would round this corner, across the lock. He would, like, presumably kick you and give you a really big boost here. You would miss this zipper. And then he would kick you again at the top of this hill sending you flying over this whole flat land section that I just drove over. And that's a really good time saver too. So if you can get that, then I'd recommend it, but it's a really rare and kind of finicky circumstance, so don't depend on it. 13 minutes, I'm still not even done explaining this stupid strategy, the Argon Matrix method as I've dubbed it. Boy. It's getting really monotonous, too, because in these past, like, failed recordings, I've been talking about the same things over and over and over again, because i got to explain it every time. Because, like, just because I've explained it in the failed recording, that means that you didn't hear it, because it is a failed recording. So I have to explain it again and try to make it more jive than the last time. I don't know, though. I think that's pretty much all the strategic points that I really need to talk about. All the big strategic points, anyways. There's a few smaller ones. That just aren't really worth mentioning at all, and you just kind of have to... You have to be playing the game to figure out all these strategic points yourself. It doesn't make as much sense unless you're actually, like, holding the controller in your hand, gracefully mo maneuvering that control stick. Navigate that controller! This is the race that caused me to navigate, or, like, learn how to master this Nintendo 64 controller. Because out of all the people that I know in my real life, I'm probably the best at handling a Nintendo 64 controller. Most everyone else that I know thinks it's really hard and awkward. And I, I don't blame them, because it can be pretty awkward at certain times. But, I don't know, I've done this race so many times that... <laughs> I'm just a master with this controller now, it seems. At least in this game, I'm a master with the controller. Like, I don't... I, if. I, if they, like, ported this to, like, well, not port, but put this on, like, the virtual console, which will never happen, by the way, um, 
and then I had to do this with a GameCube controller instead. I'm not sure I would do it as well. I think I, would, I think I would honestly do better with a Nintendo 64 controller. Or maybe not. I don't know. The GameCube controller is a really good controller. Though. It's probably the best one. Even nowadays, it's probably still the best one in my opinion. I'm doing okay here. If I get, if I play my cards right and get really lucky in this last bit of set, if in this, bleh, in the last half of this lap, I can actually win. And I'll be so happy. I'll be so elated. Doing good. Doing good, Ultimecia. Oh snap! Oh snap! Oh snap! What? Oh! 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 No! 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 Oh! No! <laughs> Oh. oh, if I had, if I hadn't missed that last zipper, I would have won. I would have won if I hadn't missed that last fucking zipper. Jeez. Here we go again. Now laugh it up, Whiz Pig. Laugh it up. You'll get yours one of these days. One of these days. stupid laugh though his laugh is like whenever I hear that now it's pretty much the harbinger of pain and annoyance and everything that I hate about this race so now whenever I hear that laugh I've learned to expect bad things to happen because only bad things can happen when that laugh comes up either he's because like he only laughs at the very beginning of the race like as he gets his little cheating head start off the starting line he laughs in the opening cutscene too, when he's like looking at d down on you all condescendingly, and he laughs at you when he passes you. So, none of those things are good. So whenever I hear that laugh, I'm just like, oh no, oh no, bring the shit shovel. We're about to get into some deep duty here. They did a really good job with this race, though. Like honestly, even though this is really hard. It's also really fun. Like, this challenge, the challenge of this race is just insurmountable, but also a really good challenge. Like, games nowadays are so ridiculously easy, they don't have, like, tough, like, super amazingly hard challenges like this anymore. Like, yeah, they have hard challenges, like the Super Mario Galaxy 2 Perfect Run. That's pretty hard, but it's not anywhere near as hard as doing this with the green boosts. gotten soft on their games nowadays. I sound like Cranky Kong or something. <laughs> Back in my day, these games were much harder. We didn't have all these fancy, fancy st st stuff. Game Sharks, whatever. I've never actually used a Game Shark. I've used an action replay on my DS before, but never a Game Shark. I own a Game Shark, but I've actually never... I tried to use it once and I couldn't figure out how. It was too confusing for me. It's like there's this stupid disc that comes with it, and I'm just like, what? I don't know what to do with the disc. Because it was like a GameCube Game Shark, and I was, I was like, well, this, get di this disc doesn't fit in the GameCube, which I guess it wouldn't. But I didn't know where to put the Game Shark thing either. Like, it looked like it fit in the memory card slot, but I couldn't figure out what to do once I got it in there, so. I don't know. There probably are some codes in this game, like, because it was like a magic codes system, if you go to the options on, like, the main screen of this game, there's a magic codes thing, and you can put in some codes. I'll probably be doing that in a bonus episode, too, showing you some of the codes. I don't know if any of them would make this race in particular any easier. I'm pretty sure there are some that would make it harder, but why would you want that? I don't even know. Oh, crap! Oh, I was getting into it too. I was like going all silent for a second there, like all open mouth. But then I just missed that stupid zip. See, if one damn thing goes wrong, you're you're screwed for life. Twenty minutes. Twenty stinking minutes. At least I'm getting like my good practice in in this race with all these failed recordings. I'm I'm getting like. I'm doing a lot better than I was in my first few recordings, let's just say that. 
Like, I'm actually managing to stay ahead of him most of the time here, or... I don't know. I guess you'd say I perfected my strategy. Because I heard somewhere, actually, like, um... If you do something for 10,000 hours or more, then you've officially become, like, a professional and you're, like, perfect at it, pretty much. Well, I don't know about perfect, because you really can't get perfect at anything, no matter how hard you try. But you pretty much have to get as close to perfect as possible in this race if you want to win. But, like, yeah, after, like, 10,000 hours, you become a professional or something. And I've, I know I've spent at least, like, probably over 10,000 hours on this race. I don't know. That is a damn long time. 10,000 hours. I'm, I'm willing to wager it, though. I'm willing to say that I probably spent 10,000 hours on this race. Not recording it, obviously. That would be insane. But on, in my lifetime... Uh, did I already tell this story? Was this in a failed record? I can't even think straight now. I can't even think of what it was in a failed recording and what it wasn't, but I'll tell it again anyways. Pretty much, like, my entire childhood from grades 3 on, pretty much from grade 3 to, like, grade 5 or so, this was my daily schedule. I would wake up and get dressed and everything, go to school, and then I would do my school stuff, and come back from school, and I would plop myself down in front of the TV and race Wizpig for hundreds of times a day, trying to beat him. To no avail until one day, I think it was actually in June of, um, well, what year was that? The year I was in grade 5. I, th I think that's actually 2005. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in, it was in 2005, maybe a bit sooner, I'm not even sure. But, I finally managed to do it. I finally managed to beat him. It was amazing. The most amazing feeling on this planet. It will never be matched by anything in my life, I bet. There's just something so pure and magical about that feeling when you first beat him after trying for so many damned years. Wizpig, you are my arch nemesis. You're worse than Bowser, you're worse than Ganondork, you're worse than Majora, you're worse than, I don't know, Sephiroth, I've never even played that game, but... You're worse than Evil Ebb. He is the ultimate villain in my mind. This is the hardest thing in any game that I've ever played. Hardest thing to do. I'm contending that it is. I know there's certain people who say other things are harder, like, um... I remember on, like, my Argonaut Dominatrix channel, I have a fail video up there right now. Like, part one of the Wizpig race failures. And someone said, like... Um, they did a Metroid Prime 2 run, where they didn't get any of the energy tanks or anything, and they said that was, that was, like, the hardest thing they've ever done. I don't know. This still might be harder. I can't really say anything, though, because I've never played Metroid Prime 2. I've seen it played by, uh, Slow Beef, who was doing it blind, actually. But... Crap. But he did have some help. It was a damn good LP. That LP is on Blip TV, Blip TV if you want to look at it. Slow Bleeps Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. He's also done the first Metroid Prime and uh, Metroid Prime Corruption, I think. All of them blind, too, so that was pretty cool. Oh! <laughs> oh, I went at some crazy angle there, I don't even know. <laughs> I love that. I love that. How he just like gets his first little bit of his laugh and then I just cut him off. I'm just like, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth and let's get to the race. See if I can actually pull off a miracle this time. Oh no, he kicked me into the same water again. Aww. Not in the same way at least. You know what's a really satisfying sound in this race though? is the sound he makes when you pass him. He goes like, oh! It sounds like he's getting punched right in the stomach by a Goron or something. <laughs> that would be kind of funny to see him and Big Oron face off. I could imagine that. And Big Oron just gets a nice, like, cut 
Come on, cut. He just th thrusts with all his might into Whizpig's big fat gut, and Whizpig goes, Oh! Just like the sound he makes when you pass him. And it's totally satisfying. I can see that happening. Oh boy. I was saying something a lot earlier than that, and I think I got off tra off topic on it. I was saying something about how they made this race perfect. It's like really fun and really challenging, but it's like perfect because like you've gone through all this shit, like the silver coins and the trophy races and the boss races and everything else, and it's just been all just one big, long, agonizingly tough road, and you're so proud to get to the end of all of it, and then the the then they're just like, you've persevered through all this, you've done a very good job, now take one last dip into the shit pond, and try to beat Whizpig with all your might. They just throw everything at you. you. Make it a totally pessimistic race too, it's like, you can't win this, but starting with the very first th like cutscene, he's laughing at you, he's looking at you, he's looking down on you, all condescendingly. He's doing all this crazy stuff. He's like, you can't beat me. And then the rain kicks in and it's all dark and gloomy. And the music too is completely detrimental. They just do everything in their power to make it such a pessimistic attitude. N making you think like, yeah, I really can't win. This is impossible. If there's one thing in any game that's come close to being impossible that's not like a glitch or a sequence break or something, it's this. This is the closest thing that they like actually make you do in the in the game in any game that is like it's as close to impossible as you can get. And I guess technically they don't make you do because you could use the green boosts, but you know my stance on that. Not doing too bad here actually. Sorry if I go like silent here, I'm kind of dumbstruck right now, I'm trying to focus. <gasps> oh my god, I've got butterflies in my stomach! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! <gasps> ah! Yes! I did it! <gasps> I just... never been more happy in my whole life. <laughs> I'm like on my knees. Just, oh, this, this... This can't be happening. I don't believe it. It has to be some kind of dream. I, I really did it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Party. Okay, I've got I've to get collected. I can't even. I can't even express it through any reaction how overjoyed I am at this. Oh my god! And they're all happy. They're all dancing, Taj, <laughs> dancing like a silly person. They're all running around, all happy. Oh, I'm still just in shock, shock and awe. I did it! There's the lighthouse. Perfect shot to end things on, right? Uh oh. He's still here. He's still here. Oh no! Well, that was completely unfair. I don't even have a card this time. Oh. You. Hockey. Fuck. What? <laughs> a spaceship? Seriously? Why didn't you raise me in that thing? Ser like, you could have. I would have never won, even with the green boost, if you raised me in that thing. Holy crap. No tipped up. Don't run into the tractor beam. <laughs> and there he goes. 
kind of a shitty ending, eh? Wow. Credit. I don't... I don't know what to say. I'm... I'm literally... I have goosebumps. I'm trembling everything. This is... I don't know. I did it! I can't! I'm not over this yet! Oh, you have no... I'm on the verge of tears, perhaps. This... Anything, nothing in my Let's Play career has ever or will ever top the feeling that I have right now. Also... <laughs> Yeah, that is the first whiz pig race. What am I up to? 30 minutes? That's not bad. I might post that all as one big thing. Oh. I just... I don't even think that... Believe it or not, my reaction was actually more over the top when I did this for the first time. I was like partying and everything. I don't know how to appropriately react to this. Like, I just feel like just going to the rooftops and shouting from the rooftops. Rooftops. <laughs> like, I beat Wizpig! Shout it to the world, man. Hurts Zog? <laughs> oh. Noah, thanks to Noah Treehouse. Noah Tree Branch. No thank yous? <laughs> Dude, this is like the worst ending of all time. No, not like the game. Not the game. It's me. I, like the worst ending to this thing of all time. Cause I'm not react. I'm still. I can't emphasize. I'm still shocked. I did not just pull that. I did not just do that. But I did. <laughs> the end? Question mark. Oh yeah. So honestly, all balloons are blue. Rocket fuel. That's one of the codes you can put in. Every time you beat the game and get the credits, they'll give you a code at the end. It's always a different one from what I remember. And it kicks us right back out to the title screen. Oh. I did it! <laughs> I did it! Well... <laughs> Shit. Beautiful. Beautiful. I did it. Okay, but I have to... I, I can party on my own time. I can party and clap myself and everything. I'm gonna give myself a nice big hug on my own time. <laughs> you can hear my voice, the shakiness in my... Okay, but... So that's not the end of this LP. I, I'm guessing you could have gathered that from the credits there. Like, the end question mark and how the ending was really quite shitty and everything. Oh, shit. No, go back, back. Oh. So that's not the end of this LP, even though that's the credits. This is one of those games where you're going to see the credits more than once. So next time on Diddy Kong Racing, we're going to see what exactly we can do. Even though it seems there's nothing left to, for us to do, we're just going to find out. So thanks everyone for watching. This is Argon Matrix. Finally, finally, having beaten Wizpig, signing out. It's all thanks to you, Tip Top. You're the boss. Thank you, and good night.